Good evening, my fellow masochists. How the devil are we all doing? I'm the Naked Gymnast, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing some tips with you, and you know, general gameplay advice to help you survive for more than five seconds in our Let Loose. Now then, I don't claim to be an expert on the game, but I've been kicked in the bollocks enough times by it to have a rough idea of what you should do and what you probably should avoid. Anyhow, enough knobbing around, let's get on with video. The first thing you should be aware of when you start playing our Let Loose is the simple fact it's not Call of Duty. Oh, that slide cancelling crap and near superhuman feats you do on that will not work in hell let loose trust me on that one and you may be thinking to yourself tng i don't give a shit i'll play this game however i want and you know what that's absolutely fine but there's one thing you should be aware of bullets in hell let loose actually act like well bullets. It's not like COD where you can take 97,000 shots. If you get it, you're going on your ass. I can't explain to you how brutal this game actually is. Honestly, it takes no prisoners whatsoever. If you want to play stupid games in it, you're going to end up winning stupid prizes. Thankfully, Mon Petit Fleurs is a simple solution to this problem. Use your brain cells and don't make moronic decisions. For example, if you see a tank, don't try and take it on with grenades. It'll just laugh at you in high explosive shell. If you see a machine gun nest, don't charge at it with a combat knife because guess what? You're going to come off worse. I know, I know this all sounds pretty self-explanatory, but after some of the shit that I've seen in this game, I feel like I've got to mention it. In short, guys, it's rather quite simple. Try and keep in cover. Don't run across open fields. Don't try and take on the whole enemy army with a Colt 45. Stick with your squad mates and stick with your team. Just apply basic human survival instincts to the game and you should come off a lot better. Next up, we have something that's rather quite important, in my opinion at least, not that it matters much, and that is know your job. And what do I mean by this? Let, let me explain it to you. El Let Loose has a number of different classes, I guess we could call them, and they range from the humble rifleman all the way up to the commander of the whole entire bloody team. Now then, each class has its own separate job that it needs to accomplish. For example, if you wanted to play as an engineer, your main role isn't at the front lines engaging with the enemy. It's all about things such as building friendly defences and destroying enemy ones, putting down resource nodes for your commander, fixing up enemy vehicles, and if you're feeling really spicy, you could even attempt to blow up enemy tanks with satchel charges. Although when you're doing that, you're just as likely to kill all of your teammates within a 50 mile radius. Simply, simply lovely. In a nutshell guys, it's not all about killing as many enemies as you can. Each role has its job, and if they're all functioning properly, you've got a better chance of winning. Even the secret clan class has its uses. Now, their main role is to stand at the back of the map and take photos, but they do work wonderfully as meat shields for your artillery guys. You know, when there's an enemy recon squad knocking around. Now all this brings me nicely onto my next point. El Let Loose is a team based game. Like I said a second ago, if you play as a team, then you're going to come off better. The best way of doing this is communication, in all honesty. If you have a microphone and you're confident enough to use it, then bloody use it. You look like saving Private Ryan from Wish. Most of the people you're going to encounter aren't dickheads. They're actually going to want to play the game and, you know, win if they possibly can. So my advice would be, if they're not obviously lunatics who just want to get you killed, sit back and listen to what they got to say. You never know, they may have a solid tactic which ends up winning you the match. Even simple stuff like shouting out enemy positions or pinging them can really help out your squad mates and the team as a whole. Now then, something else I can throw you away is know what type of match you're playing. And what do I mean by this? Well, currently in El Let Loose, there is two separate game modes. There's offensive and warfare. Warfare is effectively capture the flag. You know, if you hold more points than the enemy, or you capture them all, then you're gonna win. Simple as that. In offensive, however, you either play the attacking team or the defending team, and it's your job to either capture enemy points or defend the points against an enemy. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course it does. Now then, it's quite important to know which mode you're playing on, because on offensive, once a point is lost, you can't capture it back. It's gone for good. And what does that mean, Mon Petit Fleurs? Well, quite simply, if you're hanging around a point that's already been captured, which you can't claim back, then it's going to give the enemy a clear shot to the next objective and they're going to capture that one as well. Do you see where I'm going with this? If you're not falling back to defend points, in short, it's all going to fall apart like a shitty house of cards. Now, of course, holding the enemy back and buying your teammates some time is a good tactic, but, you know, just know when to call it quits. There's really no point in you sitting 20 miles in front of everybody else taking pot shots at the occasional enemy. You are going to be needed to defend other points and when the enemy starts spawning, 
spawning away from you, not at the initial HQ, then you're not going to see anybody anyhow. Just keep your eye on the game, see where all the action's going on, because as well as, you know, helping to win the game, you're going to get a good fight out of it and all, or get bombed to hull with hell by the enemy artillery, but we'll just gloss over that. Now, to be honest with you, that covers the main stuff. Let's get on to some little remedial things. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, isn't it? Let's start off with swimming. More to the point, the fact that you can't swim. Yep, if you jump in a river that's deep enough, you're going to drown within about 10 seconds, so try to avoid it if you possibly can. When you spawn in, if you see a transport truck, show a little bit of etiquette. Don't just jump into it and drive off on your own. Wait for your teammates, for God's sake. Trust me, if you rock up at the first point on your own, you've got to be as much use as a chocolate fire guard. Take your squad with you. Supply trucks is another one. Save him for the commander or an engineer, even a squad leader. These guys can actually do something useful with the supplies on board. You as an ordinary rifleman can't do bugger all with them, so just, you know, leave it alone. You may think walking to the first point is a ball weight, but trust me, if those supplies aren't used for something like a garrison and you've got a shit officer who doesn't put down outposts, you've got to be doing a lot more walking than that. While we're on the subject of outposts and garrisons, if you see enemy ones, bloody well destroy them. Well, I say see them, you're probably going to hear them before you actually cast your eyes on them. Anyhow, I digress. If you're playing as the Germans, listen out for American and Russian outposts, and garrisons, obviously. American ones are pretty hard to miss. They go on about hot dogs and friendly fire, whatever it is they're into over there. As for the Soviet ones, they just give off beeps and buzzes. You know, they sound like an asthmatic R2-D2. Listen out for that, and you're onto a winner. Obviously, if you're playing as the US or the Russians, then listen out for German garrisons. They're very easy to spot because they speak, well... German. Again, much like the US ones, they're very hard to bloody miss. Now you may be thinking to yourself, TNG, what do I do when I come across a garrison or an outpost? Well, outposts are quite easy to destroy. You just have to walk close to them or lob a grenade at them. Garrisons are a little bit different. You have to dismantle them. So just lay down at the side of them, hold down square. If you're on PlayStation at least, not sure where it is on Xbox, I've never touch one of those bloody things, and after a couple of seconds, the garrison will be destroyed, and this is going to stop the enemy from spawning and give you an easier time. Now obviously guys, this is just a really, really quick beginner's guide, there's loads more stuff, and you could go into a shit ton more detail and make this video 56 hours long, and obviously, if you do want more detail, there's loads of videos out there, especially class ones, which will teach you how to play a class correctly, and really get down to the nitty gritty. To put it bluntly, El Let Loose is a really difficult game, until you get used to it. You're going to do a hell of a lot of dying, a hell of a lot of walking, and you know, sometimes it's going to feel like a grind. No matter what advice I can share with you or anybody else out there, you are going to have them matches that are just properly frustrating. There's no you can do about it. But just stick with it. This game is honestly so bloody rewarding, and in my opinion, it's the best World War II shooter out there. It truly is amazing. And with the upcoming updates for the console, it's only going to get better. Anyhow, I hope this video has helped you out at least somewhat, and as we say in the off. I love you and leave you and catch you at next one.